Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, first video, um, if you didn't watch it, we just went through building or reading through 10K from scratch and kind of some things to look at. Um, kind of always the first step I do when making a evaluation video um, for my channel. So in part two here, I'm gonna just show you how we get the financial information. So um, I guess if you're just joining and you didn't watch the first one, head on over to sec.gov, more search options, and type in the stock ticker. I always look at the 10K that's most recent. You could use a Q if you want and build out quarterly projections. Um, I prefer to just stick with the Ks. Um, and that's the difference between annual and quarterly. Um, so you could kind of check quarterly to see how your projections are coming across. But um, in here, you'll see financial statements and supplementary data. Click on that, you should be able to scroll down. And then here they are. Start with the consolidated statement of operations. Um, this has last three years, so I might actually go and open up another, uh, go open like the 2018 10K just to pull some other data. But first, let's just make sure revenue, total COGS, um, it's fine. And then we have what marketing, oops, help if I could spell. Marketing, technology and development. I'm guessing that's R&D, if I remember right. Um, and administrative from there. Give us total OPEX, operating income. Let's add a couple rows in here. We'll have interest expense. Let's unfold that row. Then we'll have interest in other income. Unfold that. Then we'll have income for income taxes. A couple of rows. And this is just going to be operating income. I have provision for income taxes. Oh, actually, just delete these things. And so it's good net income. So there we go, um, and we will input the numbers here. So 2018, and I always do my numbers in millions. You can do it however you want. Just keep everything constant. It's kind of what I always say. So then marketing is what, 23, 814, 630.24. So, 1605 that ties right so that ties to this number here um interest expense does that tie that doesn't tie so they are probably just adding these two things 1226 that ties copy that formula um come back up here Oh, oops, I didn't do um, this. So actually, I like, I mean, I usually like keeping my numbers as positives, but um, I'll flip the signs. This is just like personal preference. Um, I like everything to be subtracted, but hey, is what it is. Um, and that should be subtracted. Okay, just because I'll calculate things as a percentage and when I do like income taxes, if it's negative, then it gives me like a negative percentage. Um, I use positive percentages when I make my forecast. So I just flip the signs on some of these things, but right, you still get the same um, bottom line here, one point. If I knew what I was doing, you'd get the same number here, 1.2. Um, that's because I copied over the wrong provision. There we go. Um, okay. And this is, I mean, this and reading the 10K are kind of boring. I mean, I, I enjoy reading the 10K. I wouldn't say reading a 10K is boring. Um, entering the numbers is just kind of tedious. Um, when I worked in investment banking, the best thing was like, if you pay for fact set, they just have a freaking plugin and you just download an entire um, balance sheet at once, which is great. An income statement, you don't have to enter any of this crap and it just populates for you. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have access to that anymore, and I don't pay for that myself. 
because it's expensive. Uh, so we get to go ahead and manually enter everything. And there's probably some websites where you could actually download this stuff for free, but it's good practice. And then you also just know your numbers are correct. Um, assuming you check them as you enter them. There's definitely times I make a video and then I go back and look at my numbers and something's off. And I'm like, great, now I get to go re-record a video because I fat fingered something and then made a whole model off of it. Um, so is what it is, but oh, the heck went on here. We'll have to look into that. Um, not that it really matters because we're going to exclude it from our EBITDA. Um, just be interested to know why they got so much money. Maybe COVID. They could have got some COVID relief funds. Um, I don't know. But interesting nonetheless. Uh, yep, cool. So we have that. Next thing, I was just pull a handful of items actually off of the um, cash flow statement. So, and actually for this one, uh, after we run the 10K, we understand a little bit more about the business. We know we want to understand additions to content assets. And then um, amortization of content assets. Uh, we're going to want to know the DNA. We'll want to know stock-based comp. Um, and then purchase a pp &E. So we'll want to know all those things. And we'll talk through it as we go through the model. And as you build more models, you'll get more comfortable with it. But really, we're going to back out um, the amortization piece from the COGS, right? So here we have, a, let's see, amortization of content that sets 11 billion. We're going to back that out of COGS. But then when we're doing the cash flow, we're going to take into consideration additions, which is 12 billion. Um, so this is because what you know, in a DCF, ultimately we want to get cash flow. Uh, I don't care about your net income. You can do all sorts of wonky things. I don't care about that. I want to know how much cash. Um, and I only want to adjust your EBITDA for things that I'm comfortable adjusting for. Sometimes you see them adjust for all sorts of crazy things and, you know, they probably shouldn't. And for here, like, I probably won't actually adjust for stock-based comp. Um, that's a real expense when they issue stock-based comp. It's the same as paying an employee a salary or a bonus. It's just in the form of stock. It's diluting the shareholders. Um, sometimes, right, if they have like a massive spike on an IPO or something, yes, you go ahead and back it out because it's not going to sustain. Um, but anyways, let's copy these numbers over. Additions, contents, 13. And I think this is interesting that this number has been going down. Um, I would honestly expect these things to still go up for their additions to content. Um, but I guess it is what it is. So there we go. DNA. I mean, yeah, this is pretty immaterial. Comparative, but we still want to back it out. What is this? Is that 710? Yep. Uh, Stock-based comp. I mean, this is a pretty big number, but most tech companies pay very well. Um, and it's in the form of equity compensation to their employees. What is this 173? So this is interesting. Um, their PP&E is going up. I wonder if they open, you know, a new headquarters, something like that. And we could probably go look for a schedule and it would tell us what they did. Um, but it's not... I mean, maybe we will um, try to understand what's going on with their PP&E, because that, that is, I wonder if they built like a movie studio or something like that, but um, we'll copy over this now, cash, other, current, really those are the only two things we care about, but um, we'll just, we'll copy them all over, PP&E, oops other non-current. That'll give us total assets, liabilities, current content liabilities, AP, crude expenses. And this is so we can fill out our um, working capital. Turd, 
of. And so deferred revenue is something we actually could add back, um, but non-current content. Is that other non? -current? And then that'll give us total liabilities. Okay. Choose formulas. Yep, cool. It's cash. Clearly missed something here. 8206, current content. What is that one? Oh, they have a short-term debt and I just skipped it earlier. It's a short-term debt here. That's zero. Non-current content 3334.8. There we go. So we got that all filled out. So, and real quick, we'll actually, we will pull in, um, this should be the 2018. Oh man, I don't know if that's, they probably just amended an exhibit. Let's see here, financial statements. Let's see, 2016. See marketing ten ninety seven. Operating income, there we go. Interest expense. Okay, and just quickly double check that these numbers are correct. 61, yep, 72, yep, 182, 173, 
86. Okay. So that looks good. And then we can quickly pull in this just so we can do have a two years worth of working capital changes instead of just one. Current content assets is Short-term debt, I don't see any non-current content. Long-term debt. Cool. So there we have it. We got the financial information copied over. Um, wrap this video up and then we'll go ahead and um, next video we'll project out their uh, their top line make some we'll actually the next video we'll project out the top line and then the last video we'll we'll tie out the DCF so thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you in the next video